America first met Omarosa as the supervillain of the first season of The Apprentice, and now she's working for him again uh, as assistant to the... No, you never heard that, Omarosa? That's super villain. Oh, uh, just that's villain. Like okay. <laughs> that's like a big screen stuff. Now she's yeah, like working that. as the uh, director of communications for the Office of Public Liaison. Mm. Please welcome Omarosa. Yeah. <laughs> so, my dear, you look very good. Thanks, Joy. You we look very nice. It. We're in red today. Um, so you're working for um, the Donald. All, this is my first time back in 13 years. Oh, wow. I was here on the first season of The Apprentice. Awesome. It's good to be back. And my my mentor and who I call my the, the legend of TV, Barbara Walters, was here when I last was here, and it was an honor to be here. That's right. So you're working in the White House with the president. What, what exactly are you doing? And do you genuflect in the morning? That's what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> do you what, are you, what are you doing for him? <laughs> so uh, I am director of communications for the Office of Public Liaison. Uh -huh. And really, we are the face, the coordination between the different groups that want to have a voice and to inform the policy that's happening with this administration. And so I'm honored to serve all of the different groups who want to engage with this administration. In fact, right now I'm planning our Black History Month program, and it's going to be extravagant. Wow. Oh. Well, yeah. I, let, me, let me follow up on that, because um, you, you say you're working on Black History Month, and, and yeah. one of your jobs during the campaign was to uh, reach out to the African American yeah, community. I was the director of African American engagement, engagement. for and, the Trump Pence campaign. Right, but 94% of, of black women did not vote for Donald Trump, they voted for Hillary Clinton, and how do you respond to the criticism that Donald Trump doesn't really understand the black community, doesn't really... Well, let's put it in context. Well, let me finish my question. You, well, and, how many and, questions? Because that's the, about three or four. The, the criticism has been that he's just using you for optics and that he doesn't really let care about the black the first community. first one, and then we can go through each step. First of all, African Americans traditionally vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. Let's just establish a historical uh, precedent. They, they vote for the Democrat. Mm -hmm. 94, 95 percent. So that's no different. But Donald Trump For got 13 percent of the African American vote. He doubled what Romney got. And he is very, very excited about engaging with the African American community. Now, your second and third question I really didn't hear. So if you want to sure. go through those again. Um, the we criticism can... has been in, in the African American community that Donald Trump doesn't really care about the community. And in fact, he's just using you as, as optics. First of all, What's no one uses me. <laughs> <laughs> no one uses me. <laughs> Um, first and foremost, let me just tell you a little bit about myself, and then you can understand how I got where I am. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, in the Westlake Projects, a housing project. So I am the embodiment of the American dream. I grew up on welfare, on Section 8 housing. My father was killed when I was seven years old. I went to public schools. I went to Central of Ohio, got to Howard University, and started to work in politics. So I earned my way to sit in the White House. No one gave me anything, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that um, when you start talking about the African-American community, you know, the last administration decided not to aggressively do African-American outreach. They felt that if they helped all Americans, then the black community would be helped. And that, you know, that really isn't the approach that we're taking. We have a very strategic plan of engaging this community. We see what's happening in the inner cities. We see that 56% of African-American men under 30 are either unemployed or not in school. And we want to work to change that. We see the violence that's happening in Chicago. What? It's unacceptable. Why do you they can't it's do what you did. To see Albert the Russell. amount of murders that are happening. One second, Joy. Right. Because but what's happening in Chicago and there's not an uproar that so many people are dying and being shot is unacceptable. Okay, well, why, and so we are going to address that. And this president already well, this week tweeted about that. Yeah. I want him government. to do anything government. there is to do to make sure that no family goes through what my family went through. My brother was murdered, not even five years ago, mm -hmm. shot dead in his own home. When I see these families in Chicago, seven or 800 families had to go through what my family went through, I had to sit in the courtroom with the man that murdered my brother. This is more than just politics. For me, Joy, this is my passion. Um, I understand what you're saying. I'm questioning why do you think you were able to make it and all these other people well, could not? You know, that's a bigger question than for well, a three minutes. Does racism have anything Joy. to do with it, for um, instance? And, and there are a lot of historical things that has happened that, you, that other people could answer. I'm going to tell you about my life and my well, experience. Why do you think President I was Trump, able to make it, one second, Gretchen. I was able to make help? it because my mother 
made sure that we were in the church, that Christ was the head of our lives, that education was at the top of every mm -hmm. single thing that we did. I think and it's quite common she kept us the out black of community. trouble and out of the street. Yes. And that's why I made, I can't speak because we're not all a monolith. The African American community is so diverse, but my mother and the sacrifice she made after my, my father was murdered is the reason that I am successful today. And I today. agree with all those things that you say and hats off for all Thank of your you. hard work and getting to where you are today. Uh -huh. I guess my question is, what is it about Donald Trump, President Trump, mm -hmm. that you see that will help change the way in which African Americans are in our communities? Well, I think that you all have gotten to know him as a business mogul, as a, uh, an reality entertainer, star. reality star, as a reality star, now as the president of the uh, United States. I can't Joy. Make it up. But I know him. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's got to burn your they blood. Say everybody I can mean, be president. He proved it. Go it's got to be really. Joy, I know it's got to be really, really hard after, uh, you know, the last year and a half of all the things that you said about Donald to see him sitting in the Oval Office. I know it's got to be hard for you, but I have to yeah, tell you I that I know it him. It kills me, as a matter of And I know it and does. I love that. But here is, here's the great thing. You all know him as the president. I know him as a friend. I know his heart. I know the things that he's seen has never been reported on and probably folks won't ever so talk about. So should listen to what he says? I'm talking about my experience, Joy. Yeah. I'm you can listen to what you want. You have decided to continue to hit him and hit him and hit him and not even give him a chance in his first I'm week. Waiting I'm waiting for him to apologize. I just want to ask you, though. I just, you want who I'm waiting apologize. for him to apologize for all the things he said about you. Uh, to, no, no, not please. to me. Not to me. I to veterans, to John to McCain, no, to, the to the handicapped, the disabled. <laughs> message that the message that he has about personally about school choice about opportunity about jobs I think that message did get to a lot of people and that's why a lot of African Americans a lot of people who were in poverty people of all genders and races came out my, my issue is that Americans did not come out for Donald Trump. they came out more than they had for Republicans they in did. the past and that they did something. and you have to give some credit to that but I think we also have problem. to move from campaign now he's the president right, we're no longer here's campaigning here's so those same lines how do you bring those how do you bring the people in who who are saying you know what no matter what we're doomed to our refusing to listen to the fact that a lot of these programs in my opinion will bring opportunity how do you make those people who are and aren't inclined to when listen, we come back to listen on the road so we go to uh, commercial Great. when we come yeah, back yeah. she can answer your question <laughs> <laughs> Jed, you were saying. Yeah, I was saying that although some of these policies, school choice, whatnot, have a positive outreach, I think there are some who feel that because of the statements he's made that are divisive and whatnot, that we're doomed. And they have this philosophy of we're doomed. How do you reach those people to say, hold on a second, listen to what we're actually trying to do and give us a chance? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that once people see the results, I mean, he's about delivering and being productive. And we've already seen from this first week that he is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And we can trust that if Donald Trump says he's going to give jobs, he's going to bring back manufacturing, that he's about America first, then that's what he means. And we've seen that in five days. And people who even disagree with him have to agree that this first week has been probably one of the most productive weeks of any administration. It has, but it seems that sometimes he gets a little off track as well. And he goes back to the crowd size at the inauguration and now the voter fraud oh, yeah. investigation with three to five million people voting, uh, you know, illegally. And now you have uh, Jason Chavitz. You know, from Utah, member of Congress, who says, I'm not going to start an investigation into this because I don't see any evidence of it. Is this a distraction for President Trump? Well, I think that there's a time of adjustment. You know, he's not a politician. He's never held office. And he's moving from private sector to governing. And it takes an adjustment time. I think in the first five days, he's done a spectacular job of dealing with the most important high-pressure job in the world. And so we have to give him time to make that shift. And I believe that you will see that this president is going to be incredible for this country. And I am excited about what's happening with this administration. I'm very honored to be a part of it. What, what if they find out in the voter fraud investigation that Hillary won the election? Will we do it over they again? They find out that because she didn't win. There's a possibility <laughs> she won by three million more votes. I isn't it possible? I think that anything is possible, but I think what's more important right now, I think about the families who lost loved ones in the tornadoes. I think about the families that the president talked about this week who became victims of violence because of illegal immigrants. I, I'd like to continue to talk about the election. It amuses me, but the truth is we have it real issues. Him too. 
We have real <laughs> issues that, and there are real Americans yeah. who have problems that we have to address. So no kidding. you all can sit at the table and continue to talk about those things in the media, but we have a he job to address. To let's, let, we I have, have a, a job to make sure that the American but people I, have let exactly just, what they need. Let me just need. jump in here real quickly. The day after the inauguration, mil millions of women marched around the world to protest President Trump. Many were offended by some of the things he said along the way, but how did you, how did you remedy this as a woman? Did, you, did any of this resonate with you? Well, first, I'm a, an American. I'm a very proud American, so let's start with that. And I know people like to put labels, Omarosa's black, she's a woman, she's this. I'm an American first. And seeing those women march last week, it made me very proud. It's one of the most important fundamental rights that we have in this country. Right. The right to assemble, the freedom of speech, and the right to protest. That's I love seeing that. And one. there is a march going on. There's a march going on right now, the March for Life, that I hope that you all will give the same type of coverage that you we are. We did yesterday, actually. Yeah, we covered it yesterday. yesterday. But today, it's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And so that same freedom should be afforded to all Americans. And I'm so glad that the vice president is probably uh, preparing to speak at the March for Life right now. But why do you think it's so divisive? Though. It's so divisive Reggie, in our society it's, right it's now. It's politics. You know, you know, politics is a tough game. It's, this is my second time but, in the White House, so I'm not divisive. really new to oh. the tension that comes with it. What's new to me yeah. is just this this desire to paint Donald Trump with this negative brush without giving him a chance but to do what he said he could do. Can I just ask you this? We've been talking about how divisive this election is, and, and Gretchen's been talking about how divisive this election is. We often say that it comes from the top. He he did lead this very divisive campaign. Will we don't hear him think, apologize? Don't you think will the media we, contributed will, will, will to that? Will we hear him apologize? No. Yeah. For of course the not. The thing he said. stood by everything that he said. And now, Maybe and now, let me say, he didn't make fun of it. A disabled reporter, but you can continue to say that. If you say it enough, people may may start to believe it. Let me just say this as I close this. Y'all that that. can keep throwing things at me. I'm not going to really fall for that. What I will say is the American people can listen to me right now and right here. We are committed to making this country the best it's going to be. We're not going to look in the past. We're going to look forward and put this country first. And that's what's not been happening in the last eight I'm years. We're going to put America first. We're going to put people back to work. We're going to make sure people are safe. I and that's what this president want is that about. Same as you, this Omarosa. is a table for you all to negotiate things that you, did, you want to talk about from the past. But I now work for this country. Yes. And I take my job very seriously. Can we see his and tax returns, do you think? See, Joy, <laughs> do you? As we, I see we only have one minute left. My handsome fiance traveled all yeah. the way here from Jacksonville, Florida, Most and Americans he is in the audience. Girl, I'm talking about he, my man. He, 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 he is in the audience. No, 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 boo. I'm talking about my man. We're getting married. I'm so glad that he's here. He's a Democrat. I'm a Republican. We get along he just fine. He may want to see his tax returns. You want to see his tax returns? <laughs> Raise your hand if yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I just want to know if you're going to take his last name. Oh, uh, of course, of course, he's my husband. I'm so, he's going to be my husband in April. Right. And I'm so happy that he's here with me. And he 40 days until the election, Miss Ann Coulter is back with a new book called Mugged, where she claims that President Obama has abandoned black Americans and that the O.J. Simpson verdict was a great thing for America. Please welcome the very controversial Miss Ann Coulter. Ann. Tell me what you're trying to say in this book. Because uh, we don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is um, race mongering has been very bad for America. Liberals use it to promote causes that have nothing to do with blacks and, in fact, harm blacks. And the, that excellent lead-in you just gave about um, O.J., I mean, I think that was the moment, having lived near New York City in the 70s and 80s, which was the golden era. It was like Trayvon Martin and Duke Lacrosse case every day. With the O.J. verdict, white America said, that's it, the white guilt bank is shut down. And that ended up being the best thing that ever happened what are you to mean? black what are you Americans. Talking about? I, I meant that mean. no longer... Was being acquitted was, was good for who? Yes, because you had millions of white people watching with the equivalent of what in New York we used to refer to as the Brooklyn juries, who simply would not convict even guilty black criminals. Oh, um, not well, innocent black Hold criminals. up, Ms. Coulter. Please yes. stop. Please stop. If you're going to talk about race, at least, at least know what you're talking about. At least know what you're talking about. Well,
tell me how much you know about being black. Well, this isn't and about black, being black. Well, but you just said, this is, you just made all these statements about how black people feel. Tell oh, me how God. you know that. Yeah, you did. This is not a book about black people. Uh -huh. It is a book about white liberals. And I do know, and this is a fact, that uh -huh. once for years, Republican policies on crime and welfare, for example, were called racist. When they finally got implemented after the OJ verdict, I might add, by Julian, crime, Giuliani in New York, Reagan and Bush judges overall, uh -huh. Tens of thousands of black lives were saved. That is a fact. I don't have to know about how to how about being black. You actually, but I know because, because you you're, be you're, you're, to be dead. you're 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 what is what are your facts are a little just a little shaky. I mean, you're saying that because black people because <laughs> liberals are are what because liberals have abandoned black people now because. What? I, I don't no, get it. I don't understand. You, I don't think liberals ever cared about black people. I mean, five minutes after the Civil Rights Act of 64, they start calling everything that has nothing to do with black people a civil rights oh, issue. Wait a Abortion on demand, him. homeless rights. So uh, are you saying that liberals don't care about black people? Then are you saying Republicans embrace us in a warm, <laughs> fuzzy <laughs> way? Do. We're not embraced back. back but yeah, we tried to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So the Southern strategy was a white liberal thing? No, it was a Republican thing, no. and, and also uh, no, Newt Gingrich is... calls President Obama the food stamp president. That's not racist. This chapter. Well, wait a second. Do you, you really think that was? Do you believe it was racist for Newt to say? That the president is a food stamp president. Well, well, he say it that? Like, yeah, just skip. I'm not a big fan of Newt, so we can just skip that for a second sure. and get to the Southern strategy. Yeah. Because I, I've specifically disproved it. It's an absolutely liberal folklore. Um, Republicans were winning the South since 1920. It was the outer states of the South. It was Texas, Tennessee, Black Kentucky, were Virginia. Voting. What are you talking about? We weren't well, allowed to vote. Who was trying to get them to vote? Republicans were. Yeah, and, the first, true. and the first Congre Black congressmen were all Republicans. And the first Black governor was a Republican. You were talking about when? Way back, so after in is so different. From yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That's, now, that is and, definitely hey. what we're told. Uh, but in fact, the black, the, right. the Democratic segregationists were all liberal Democrats. It is a lie that they were conservative everybody Democrats. Was it was a Jay segregationist, darling. And then, you know, the basically, they everybody was. White people were. It didn't matter whether they were Republicans or not. Ask your question. The first Just Sorry. read chapter 14 in this book. The I first thing you know to be elected in the South. This is my grandmother who was Baker. there, who remembers what Howard happened. Howard Baker, an aggressive integrationist, first Republican voted, elected in Tennessee to the Senate. You have Winthrop Rockefeller, first Republican governor in Arkansas. But you know, I have a question Arkansas. about today. Integration. Let me ask you something making, about what's yeah, going yeah. on now. It seems to me, it's, a lie. It seems it's, to me it's that voter suppression yeah is happening in the areas where black people and Hispanics are, and they really is being promoted by the Republicans, not no. the Democrats. So in my view, and I have a different one from you, it looks as though the Republicans are really going against blacks, not the liberals. No, and this what is a perfect example. Oh, yes, it is, and it's a perfect example. No, I'll explain why of, of liberals using the label of civil rights to promote a liberal cause they support, i.e. voter fraud. In fact, one of the first states in the union to pass voter ID bills was Rhode Island, 85 percent Democratic legislature. And who pushed it? A black Democrat in the can, House, a black talk, Democrat you, you, you in the you Senate. Know, that's, not, that's a fact. No, you, yeah. you may have pick out Rhode that's Island, but there are other about. states where it's completely Why Republican black driven. Democrats be pushing this? Because they had seen because voter fraud. Because they want the Hispanic vote to go to Rhode Island. Can I ask a general question? Mm -hmm. Every book that That's you write funny. is very controversial and shocking, and it's usually an opinion that's disparate with everybody right. else. Right. Do you just write these books and try to find <laughs> whatever it is that's going to make everybody say... <laughs> well, you don't read this an excellent question. The reason I write these books is because I try to correct things that people believe that but are just false. Question and this, is a lot but this is a question because I was reading a book I and, and you're the only and, one and, that and, says but, it. But, but, no, the, well, there are a few right. things. I mean, the, discovering well, that we never saying, won Sharon? the Goldwater Sorry, states and Republicans didn't won, win the Dixiecrat states until the Dixiecrats died oh, out. You keep staying back in the past. You got to come into the okay. present. But this is what I want to say. That's new to me. You, the we, rest of it, other people know. In reading your book, you know, you you, you keep saying if you read if you would read chapter fourteen, if you read well, you you this. make such divisive comments and incendiary comments and hateful comments at times. It makes people not want to pick up your book and I don't read think it. So, so. I don't agree with her reading. Yeah, well, people
I don't think so. You I'm know, you know, a hateful comment in no, here. I, you know, when you talk about you stay in the past, I, that, that Republican. No, only because it was brought up. There's only one chapter on the past, and I mean, it's just a fact. But when you talk about something like voter suppression, which obviously is trying to keep black people and Latinos, they have never done that. That was a Democrat thing. But and it's in states where they had, they don't even have any. Can I just say one thing, Dan? No matter what, you sit down here and you've got five women going, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yes. Whatever it is, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Ben Carson did his best to infuriate the liberal hosts on ABC's The View with his views on abortion and women's health. You sort of feel that there is not actually a war on women, but there may be a war on what's inside of women? Yeah, is that... the babies. I mean, we're killing oh. babies all over the place. There is no way you can convince me that they're not important, that they're just a mass of so cells so that you can do ban. anything I, I... This prompted Joy Behar to bring Planned Parenthood into the discussion. So how important is birth control then to the Republican Party? They should be out there really applauding Planned Parenthood for supplying birth control, mammograms, and everything else. Why are they against Planned Parenthood? Because, Joy, they kill more babies using tax dollars than they provide women with birth control. Oh, and they don't provide mammograms. We do not have mammogram machines at our health centers, and we've never stated that we did. Behar then tried to corner Carson about governmental support programs, but he wasn't having any of it. You don't Here's what have I the believe money. in, because I get sick and tired of people, particularly progressives, saying Carson grew up poor, he must have benefited from government programs, and now he wants to withdraw all the programs well, from not, poor people. We did not assume Wait a that. minute. Didn't I've heard that so many times. You've heard it too. Us. It's not a bunch us. of crap. And what I really actually want to do is provide people with a mechanism for coming out of a state of dependency and climbing the ladder and becoming part of the fabric of this America. Is, do you agree with Dr. Carson? Share and comment below. mind is uh, pretty made up about waterboarding, correct? You were waterboarded as part of your, uh, part of your Navy yeah, SEAL training, correct? Well, it wasn't part of Navy SEAL training. It was part of what they call SEER school, yes. survival, escape, resistance, evasion. It's, yep. a, it's a school they required you to go to prior to the combat zone of Vietnam. And yes, we were all waterboarded there, and yes, it is torture. What do you think about Nancy Pelosi in terms of what she has been claiming I, with the CIA lying well, to? I think misleading what's Congress? worse is this, the fact that it happened. If, if we hadn't waterboarded to begin with, none of this would be a controversy, would it? If we hadn't and waterboarded... Torture, wait, torture is torture. If you're going to be a country that follows the rule of law, which we are, torture is illegal. But these were specifically approved techniques with KSM, approved okay? By who? Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the information we extracted from him before waterboarding was zip. Afterward, no, he released no. the information. We got all of it before waterboarding. Yes. This was a case and that was used three times. The point is this. Specific. All right, wait a minute. If waterboarding is okay. <laughs> Do you want me to put you in a Nelson? Wait, if waterboarding. <laughs> If waterboarding's okay, then why don't we let our police do it to suspects so they can learn what they know? That's an interesting Wait. question. I and I'll follow that, that again. If waterboarding's okay, why didn't we waterboard McVeigh and Nichols, the Oklahoma City bombers, to find out if there were more people well, what's involved? What's your answer to that? Why didn't we? Why we didn't did. We? Well, I don't what know. Is, we only we seem. Are, are we only is? seem to waterboard Muslims. Mm. Well, well, that's an extreme well, one of the things that is uh, this kind of situation. Uh, we uh, have we we anyone else? We were not about Name we someone we else we've waterboarded. Weekend. Well, one of the things that's coming out now is that they were waterboarding them to get a connection between Iraq and Al Qaeda, and that the reason they waterboarded was to get information about so that they could justify their invasion of what Iraq. Do you, what do you think is going to happen? Does, now? How does that work into your theory that on how the great theory. it is? Look, I'm not saying it's great. Okay, I'm not saying, hey, everybody, let's go next door and get waterboarded. I'm, I'm concerned right now about Nancy. Mm -hmm. Pelosi, who is supposedly briefed as it's been. She's lying. She lied. All right. Okay. okay. She lied. She's they want her out now. now. They want her out now, right? Because she lied? Sure. Yeah. Well, she why didn't they ask for Bush and, Bush and Cheney to go out when they lied about why we went into Iraq? Senator Clinton. Senator Clinton. Hillary Clinton was right there with them as the we're 
point is Democrats. nothing's okay, going to happen because they're all involved. Yeah. The Dems and Repubs yeah. are both involved. Yeah. That's yeah. why yeah. President Obama's backing off from it, he and and, and they're not going to do it now. It's a good thing I'm not the president. I'm an independent because I would prosecute the people who did it. I would prosecute the people who ordered it, and they would all go to would jail. Would you prosecute President Obama in the future, going backwards when he ordered the killing of the Somali pirates? I mean, you have to think about no, because the Somali that's pirates is, that's apples Absolutely. and oranges. Yeah. Do you You're think not that, talking about, about this? someone in custody who is supposedly under. Okay, how would we feel? Look how outraged we were when waterboarding was done to our vets in Vietnam. Amen. Where do you think That's we learned right. it from? Right. And we created the Hanoi Hilton right in Guantanamo. Mm. That's our Hanoi Hilton. People have died there. People are tortured there. I'm ashamed if of are, my country. People aren't basing, all those extremists are not basing their behaviors on ours. I, I can guarantee that. They are out it to get us no Should we what. stoop to their level? Look, we no. Have, we we should be above them. Mm. Absolutely. Torture is wrong. Torture is wrong. But enhanced and interrogation techniques Enhanced are interrogation is Jip Cheney changing a word. Wow. Yes, Dick yeah. Cheney yeah. comes up with a new word to cover his well, ass. You believe come up with a new word. <laughs> new question. Hey. New question. I said it before. <laughs> you give me a waterboard one hour in Dick Cheney and I'll have him confessing to the Sharon Tate yeah, murders. Yeah, baby. <laughs> the most conservative candidates in the race. You, you want to ban all abortions, defund Planned Parenthood, ban gay marriage, oppose same-sex unions. Um... And yet you want to govern all the folks in the United States, or are you just governing from... Well, my, 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 re, my response to this is the people that have a different point of view, would you ask them the same question? Yes, I ask everybody the same question. Well, everybody but, the but, same I mean, question. What do you... you but the point is, yeah. if, if, someone, if someone has the differ, a different point of view, does that mean that they're only going to govern for people who support all well, those that's things? Why I, the, that's why I ask. The answer is no, of course not. I well, mean, the, and so, so how, how will you say to your constituents who may be gay or may find themselves in a position uh, with something like Planned Parenthood, what will you replace it with well, if you take it away? Well, first off, I, I'm, I'm for reallocating every dollar that goes to Planned Parenthood. And, and put them in women's health centers that actually provide more comprehensive services than Planned Parenthood does. Planned Parenthood, for example, doesn't provide mammograms. Now, I know people say they do, but they don't. In fact, yeah, they do. No, Ce uh, Cecile Richards yesterday at the hearing said, in fact, they do not. In fact, Ooh. there are no... There are, no, there are no Planned Parenthoods that, that provide any mammogram services. They basically provide abortion, contraception, STDs, things like, and, and, and pregnancy tests. That's it. There are much more comprehensive women's health care centers. I, I, I spent a lot of time in Iowa, mm -hmm. and in Iowa there's 213 uh, women's health centers. Mm -hmm. 13 Planned Parenthood centers. So if you said we were going to take the Planned Parenthood money, reallocate it to actually clinics that do provide a whole host of other women's health services, women are probably going to get a more holistic uh, health uh, health screening mm -hmm. at those places than they would at Planned Parenthood. So you're saying if you reallocate all of that money yeah. away from Planned Parenthood to these clinics, will those clinics then provide abortions? Or where do you want these displaced women to go? Yeah, well, there are obviously Planned Parenthood is one abortion provider uh, in the country. There are others that, that provide abortions. Some, it depends on the state. Some, there are very few abortion providers. Some, like in the state of New York, there's a lot of them. So, uh, that again, the money for that we're reallocating has nothing to do with abortion. I mean, I, I will accept that that the, the money that is going to Planned Parenthood cannot be used for abortion. So when you reallocate that money away, it shouldn't affect their ability to provide abortions, unless of course they're commingling funds, and that's one of the questions that that people have. Party will be a game changer in the midterm elections. Politics are so intense right now that it is the perfect time for a visit from the man who has just released his ninth book titled Pinheads and Patriots. We'll talk about that in a bit. Please welcome Bill O'Reilly. Germ phobias? Is that why you no, do No, no, no. I just want to get to the uh, chase yes, here. You know, you had so, many, time, and so many questions. I yes. know you have. Yeah, so, okay. Look at you. Look, every time I come on here, she's. How did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I have a 
case of gas. That's oh, all that's do. bothering me. Yeah. It's not you. Happen when you're here. I know. I was going to say some right wing plot or something. <laughs> Just gas. Just gas. Uh, well, so while we're gassing here, so Republicans, November election, uh, they say that the Republicans are going to come out on top. What do you think? You know, it's hard to predict this stuff because it, you know stuff goes in and out, and it's tightening up in uh, places like West Virginia and Washington State now. So I don't make predictions, but I will say it is a referendum on President Obama. That is what this vote is about. It's not about the individual candidates. It's about him. And people on the right, conservative people, are angry. So they're more likely to come out than the people on the left. Are you angry? Not really, because, I mean, the Fox News Channel did not suffer in this recession. We, we prospered in this recession, and I feel kind of guilty about it, because a lot of my friends, working class people, are not doing well. But we did great. So, you know, I'm not angry about that. I'm, a, I'm always a little teed off about politics, because I think they're a bunch of phonies, and I don't think most of them look out for us in either party. Mm -hmm. Well, I know your show is, a, your show yeah, is always a... Uh, yeah. Bill, your, yeah. Bill, Bill O'Reilly's show gets big numbers. I know that, Bill. But now you're up against Spitzer. Who? <laughs> Elliot Spitzer on CNN. Not everybody's as inside as you are. You know, well, Elliot uh, Spitzer is on CNN opposite Bill O'Reilly. Well, you know, we wish him well. It's a competitive marketplace, and he's there. He and gets his shot. you don't really wish him well, but that's No, I really don't. Like I don't care what he does. Okay. I mean, I'm not that kind of guy. you. Not it right. won't, no, I don't think, but too. look, I'm not one of these guys, oh, I want to kill him. I, there's a few people I want to kill, but he's not Who one Who do you want to kill? <laughs> Who do you want to kill? <laughs> You're looking at me very sexually yeah, now. I know. <laughs> No, no, I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. There's a couple of people who, uh, who uh, I'm not going to name their names because that gives them publicity, but who are nasty and, and hateful, and I don't like uh -huh. those people. You know, okay. one, thing you do, yeah. one thing you do on your show every night is you show uh, Obama's dropping uh, approval ratings. Now, do you think this No, I don't is... do that every night, Sherry. Okay. I only do it when the new poll comes out, which is my job out. to do it. If it goes up, I'll show that. In fairness, I've seen that as well. Do you think it's because of the economy? Of course. That, that his, uh, Two things, drops? and that's an excellent question. Two things are, are driving President Obama's poll numbers down and driving him individually crazy because he didn't expect any of this. The economy is just flat. All right, numbers came out today. Again, they're not good. So that, that's number one. But number two... Again, he inherited a lot of it. Oh, yeah, 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 but that, the statute okay, of limitations but... have run out on that. He spent a trillion sure. dollars. Really. Whoa! Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look. When you spend a trillion dollars trying to turn it around, it doesn't work. That's on you, okay? Actually, it's not done. on the pinheads before you. Uh, macroeconomics is not my deal. Okay. I'm just explaining why his numbers are down. So the people see a trillion dollars of their tax money and nothing to show for it yet. But they also see a widening gulf between the president and them personally. And that's what I write what about in Pinheads mean? and Patriots. Know, All right, let me give you an example. The mosque. The mosque down here on 9-11. That's inappropriate. It's, it's sure. They have a right to do it in and, 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 and the Constitution, but it's inappropriate because a lot of the 9-11 families, who I know, say, look, we don't want that. Yeah, that's, we, that shouldn't be there. But what about the discussion? No, 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 no. But there's the president. There's the president going, well, they have a right to do it. Yes. And then the guy this says, America. and then the guy, oh, hold America. it, hold it. Listen to me because you'll learn. Oh. All right? He says to the press, yeah, they have a right to do it, and that's true. Yeah. And then the question is, but what about the wisdom of it, Mr. President? And he goes, I'm not going to comment. Whereupon, everybody in the country goes, what? Well, wait a minute. Let Come me ask on. you this. That Let is me ask the you gulf this. Let me ask it. you this. So you're saying that, that Americans are not smart enough to recognize that while it is part of our Constitution to say the freedom of religion and freedom to worship, and there were 70 families who are Muslim, uh, who do buildings. also died in that building. Yeah. So you're saying that we, we, that his saying that they have the right to do it and not is saying wrong? any more than that is really? why his approval That's rating so has gone American. down. Show, I'm showing that there is a gulf between they, w Americans wanted to know what his opinion was on the issue and yeah, he wouldn't fact, give it. We're but, Americans. That's so one, that's we one agree thing. with him. But you know, so you what said about You this? agree with him. No, most we're Americans, Americans. I'm an American. Wait, let me break this to you. Seventy percent of Americans don't want that moss down there. Where's so don't give me the we do. You want to bet on that? You want to bet? I'll show you that poll in a minute. 
Right? Is that Americans? Yeah. Seventy percent don't want, then, don't want but it. But why is that? But why aren't why? we because saying? Because it's inappropriate. Why, why is it inappropriate when seventy families died? Why did you kill this on 9/11? No. Oh my God. Muslims oh didn't kill us on 9-11? Is that what you're saying? It's the extremists. extremists. What religion were they in? What religion was what they are. Mr. McVeigh? Mr. McVeigh was an extremist as well. Well. I'm 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 well. I'm I'm well. extremist as well. And he killed people. I'm telling you, 70% of the country. I don't want to sit here. I don't want to sit here. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. You're outraged about Muslims killing us on 9-11. You have just seen what should not happen. We should be able to have discussions without washing our hands and screaming and walking off stage. I love my colleagues. It should not have happened. Now, let me just say to you in a calmer sure. voice, it was extremist. You cannot take a whole religion and, and, and demean them because not of what some... Anybody. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. When you no, say I'm that it was Muslim... If that's what you think. That's Muslim. what we think. Extremists. Extremists. Here's the issue, and you this is what has to be understood. You've got to make a right, distinction, if, if, Bill. If anybody felt that I was demeaning all Muslims, yes, I apologize. Well, that's what Can you I say, do you, you think the problem, said. though, okay. Bill, is that if we go back in time, early in this administration, the president himself said we weren't allowed to use the word terrorist early on. So then he started using the word, hang on, hear me out. there was a reason why he started saying the word, he started saying radical Islamists, radical Muslims. So then there was then a closer association with what happened and the religion, I think if he would have just let us say terrorists, because there are terrorists across all religions that. and all faiths, then this wouldn't even be a problem. You're going to... No, no. Okay. Here's, look. Okay. We only have a minute left. Oh, no, we no, have no, more no, time no, coming no, back. Okay. He's afraid to say Here comes one of them back. We're back, because look. now you apologize. You apologize. All right, look. But that's not the issue. The issue is that it's inappropriate because of the context of what happened on 9-11. And if I didn't, if I was inartful in explaining yes. that, but Muslim fanatics, terrorists, whatever That's word, different. killed us. There are 100 mosques in New York City. Okay? okay. They can move it away and nobody's okay. going to bother. Okay, but the issue of the mosques, which is an issue that seems to some degree to have dissipated, and we're talking about Obama in general, may not be the major issue as to why no, his popularity has gone. separated now, let me, the president to some, from okay. the folks. Okay, now, you have written a book, and we're going to come back and talk about it, called Pinheads and Patriots. And at this point, it's very hard to see which you are. We'll be right back <laughs> with Lord Bill O'Reilly. America first met Omarosa as the supervillain of the first season of The Apprentice, and now she's working for him again uh, as assistant to the... No, you never heard that, Amorosa? That's super villain. Oh, uh, just that's villain. Like, okay. <laughs> that's like a big honor. Stuff. Now she's yeah, working like as the uh, director of communications for the Office of Public Liaison. Mm. Please welcome Amorosa. <laughs> so, my dear, you look very good. Thanks, Joy. You we look very nice. It. We're in red today. Um, so you're working for um, the Donald. Well, this is my first time back in 13 years. Oh, wow. I was here on the first season of The Apprentice. Awesome. Thank Thank you. Good Thank to be back. And my my mentor and who I call my the, the legend of TV, Barbara Walters, was here when I last was here, and it was an honor to be here. That's right. So you're working in the White House with the president. What, what exactly are you doing? And do you genuflect in the morning? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> do you what, are you, what are you doing <laughs> for him? So uh, I am director of communications for the Office of Public Liaison. Uh -huh. And really, we are the face, the coordination between the different groups that want to have a voice and to inform the policy that's happening with this administration. And so I'm honored to serve all of the different groups who want to engage with this administration. In fact, right now, I'm planning our Black History Month program, and it's going to be extravagant. Wow. Oh. Well, yeah. I, let, me, let me follow up on that, because... 
um, you say you're working on Black History Month, and, and yeah. one of your jobs during the campaign was to uh, reach out to the African American yeah, community. I was the director of African American engagement, engagement. for and the Trump Pence campaign. Right, but 94% of, of black women did not vote for Donald Trump. They voted for Hillary Clinton. And how do you respond to the criticism that Donald Trump doesn't really understand the black community, doesn't really. Well, let's put it in context. Well, let me finish my question. You, well, and, how many and, questions? Because that's the, about three or four. The, the criticism has been that he's just using you for optics and that he doesn't really care about the black the first community. one and then we can go through each step first of all African Americans traditionally vote Democratic mm -hmm. let's just establish a historical uh, precedent they, they vote for the Democrat mm -hmm. 94 95 percent so that's no different but Donald Trump for got 13 too. percent of the African American vote he doubled what Romney got and he is very very excited about engaging with the African American community now your second and third question I really didn't hear so if you want to sure. go through those again um, the criticism can... has been in, in the African American community that Donald Trump doesn't really care about the community and in fact he's just using you as as optics first of all What's no one uses me <laughs> <laughs> no one uses me <laughs> Um, first and foremost, let me just tell you a little bit about myself and then you can understand how I got where I am. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio in the Westlake projects, a housing project. So I am the embodiment of the American dream. I grew up on welfare, on Section 8 housing. My father was killed when I was seven years old. I went to public schools. I went to Central of Ohio, got to Howard University and started to work in politics. So I earned my way to sit in the White House. No one gave me anything, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, when you start talking about the African-American community, you know, the last administration decided not to aggressively do African-American outreach. They felt that if they helped all Americans, then the black community would be helped. And that, you know, that really isn't the approach that we're taking. We have a very strategic plan of engaging this community. We see what's happening in the inner cities. We see that 56% of African-American men under 30. And I do know, and this is a fact, that uh -huh. once for years, Republican policies on crime and welfare, for example, were called uh -huh. racist. When they finally got implemented after the OJ verdict, I might add, by Giuliani, crime, Giuliani in New York, Reagan and Bush judges overall, uh -huh. Tens of thousands of black lives were saved. That is a fact. I don't have to know about how to how about being black. You're, 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 what is, what are your facts are a little, just a little shaky. I mean, you're saying that because black people, because <laughs> liberals are, are what? Because liberals have abandoned black people now because what I, I don't no, get I, I don't understand you, I don't think liberals ever cared about black people I mean five minutes after the Civil Rights Act of 64 they start calling everything that has nothing to do with black people a civil rights Wait issue a abortion on demand man. homeless rights so are you uh, saying that you liberals do don't care about black people then are you saying Republicans embrace us in a warm <laughs> yeah. fuzzy I blanket? do we're not embraced back but yeah, we tried to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So the Southern strategy was a white liberal thing? No, it was a Republican Western. thing. No. And, and also, uh, no, Newt Gingrich is... calls President Obama the food it's stamp president. Food. That's not racist? This chapter. Wait well, a second. You know, that, that, do you really think that was, do you believe it was racist for Newt to say, that the president is a food stamp president. Well, well, he wouldn't say that. Like, just just skip, I'm not a big fan of Newt, so if we could just skip that for a second sure. and get to the Southern strategy. Yeah. Because I, I've specifically disproved it. It's an absolutely liberal folklore. Um, Republicans were winning the South since 1920. It was the outer states of the South. It was Texas, Tennessee, Black Kentucky, and Virginia. Voting. What are you talking about? We weren't well, allowed to vote. Who was trying to get them to vote? Republicans were. Yeah, and, the first, true. and the first Congre Black congressmen were all Republicans. And the wait, first Black wait, governor wait, wait, was a Republican. You were talking about back after in is so different from yeah. no, 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 yeah. that's, that is definitely hey. what we're told uh, but in fact the black the, the Democratic segregationists were all liberal Democrats it is a lie that they were conservative everybody Democrats was, it was a Jay segregationist darling and then you know the basically they everybody was yes. white people were it didn't matter whether they were Republicans or not Just Sorry. read chapter 14 in this book. The I first know, of all, to be elected in the South. This is my grandmother was who was Baker. there, who remembers Howard what happened. Howard Baker, uh, an aggressive integrationist, first Republican voted, elected in Tennessee to the Senate. You have Winthrop Rockefeller, first Republican governor in Arkansas. But you know, I have a question Arkansas. about today. Integration. Let me ask you something making, about what's yeah, going yeah. on now. It seems to me, it seems to me that voter suppression yeah. 
is happening in areas where black people and Hispanics are, and they really is being promoted by the Republicans, not no. the Democrats. So in my view, and I have a different one from you, it looks as though the Republicans are really going against blacks, not the liberals. No, and this what is a perfect example. Oh, yes, it is, and it's a perfect oh. example. No, I'll explain why, of, of liberals using the label of civil rights to promote a liberal cause they support, i.e. voter fraud. In fact, one of the first states in the union to pass voter ID bills was Rhode Island, 85% Democratic legislature, and who pushed it? A black Democrat in the keep, House, a black talk, Democrat you, you in the Senate. That's a fact. No, yeah. You may pick out Rhode it's Island, but there are other about. states where it's completely Why Republican Why black driven? Democrats be pushing this? Because they had seen because voter fraud. Because they want the Hispanic because vote to go to Rhode Island. ask a general question? Mm -hmm. Every book that That's you write. Commercial. Great. When we come back, she can answer your question. <laughs> Jed, you were saying. Yeah, I was saying that although some of these policies, school choice, whatnot, have a positive outreach, I think there are some who feel that because of the statements he's made that are divisive and whatnot, that we're doomed. And they have this philosophy of we're doomed. How do you reach those people to say, hold on a second, listen to what we're actually trying to do and give us a chance? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that once people see the results, I mean, he's about delivering and being productive. And we've already seen from this first week that he is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And we can trust that if Donald Trump says he's going to give jobs, he's going to bring back the manufacturing, that he's about America first, then that's what he means. And we've seen that in five days. And people who even disagree with him have to agree that this first week has been probably one of the most productive weeks of any administration. It has, but it seems that sometimes he gets a little off track as well. And he goes back to the crowd size at the inauguration and now the voter fraud oh, yeah. investigation with three to five million people voting voting, uh, you know, illegally. And now you have uh, Jason Chavitz, you know, from Utah, member of Congress, who says, I'm not going to start an investigation into this because I don't see any evidence of it. Is this a distraction for President Trump? Well, I think that there's a time of adjustment. You know, he's not a politician. He's never held office. And he's moving from private sector to governing. And it takes an adjustment time. I think in the first five days, he's done a spectacular job of dealing with the most important high-pressure job in the world. And so we have to give him time to make that shift. And I believe that you will see that this president is going to be incredible for this country. And I am excited about what's happening with this administration. I'm very honored to be a part of it. What, what if they find out in the voter fraud investigation that Hillary won the election? Will we do it over they again? They will find that, that because she didn't win. There's a possibility <laughs> she won by three million more votes. I isn't it possible? I think that anything is possible, but I think what's more important right now, I think about the families who lost loved ones in the tornadoes. I think about the families that the president talked about this week who became victims of violence because of illegal immigrants. I, I'd like to continue to talk about the election. It amuses me, but the truth is we have it real issues. Him too. We have real issues, that, and there are real Americans yeah. who have problems that we have to address. So no kidding. you all can sit at the table and continue to talk about those things in the media, but we have a he job to address. To well, let, we have, have a, a job to make sure that the American but people I, have let exactly just, what they need. Let me just need. jump in here real quickly. The day after the inauguration, mil millions of women marched around the world to protest President Trump. Many were offended by some of the things he said along the way, but how did you, how did you remedy this as a woman? Did, you, did any of this resonate with you? Well, first, I'm a, an American. I'm a very proud American, so let's start with that. And I know people like to put labels, Omarosa's black, she's a woman, she's this. I'm an American first. And seeing those women march last week, it made me very proud. It's one of the most important fundamental rights that we have in this country. Right. The right to assemble, the freedom of speech, and the right to protest. That's I love seeing that. And one. there is a march going on. There's a march going on right now, the March for Life, that I hope that you all will give the same type of coverage that you we are. Did we did yesterday. We covered it yesterday. But something. today, it's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And so that same freedom should be afforded to all Americans. And I'm so glad that the vice president is probably uh, preparing to speak at the March for Life right now. But why do you think it's so divisive? Though. It's so divisive it's in our society it's, it's right it's now. It's politics. You know, you know, politics is a tough game. It's, this is my second time but in the White House, so I'm divisive. not really new to oh. the tension that comes with it. What's new to me is just this, this desire to paint Donald Trump with this negative 
negative brush without giving him a chance but to do Catherine, what he said. Can I just do. ask you this? We've been talking about how divisive this election is, and, and Gretchen's been talking about how divisive this election is. We often say that it comes from the top. He he did lead this very divisive campaign. Will we don't hear him think, apologize? Don't you think will the media we, contributed will, will, will to that? Will we hear him apologize? No. Yeah. For of course not. The thing because that he, he said. stood by everything that he said. And now, he, and now, let me just say, reporter didn't make fun of a disabled reporter, but you can continue to say that. That if you say it enough, people may, may start to believe what about it. Let me just say this genitals? as I close this. Y'all that that. can keep throwing things at me. I'm not going to really fall for that. What I will say is the American people can listen to me right now and right here. We are committed to making this country the best it's going to be. We're not going to look in the past. We're going to look forward and put this country first. And that's what's not been happening in the last eight I'm years. We're going to put America first. We're going to put people back to work. We're going to make sure people are safe. I and that's what we this want president is about. Same as you, This Omarosa. is a table for you all to negotiate things that you, do, you want to talk about from the past. But I now work for this country. Yes. And I take my job very seriously. Can we see his and tax returns, do you think? See, Joy, <laughs> do you? As we, I see we only have one minute left. My handsome fiance traveled all yes. the way here from Jacksonville, Florida, Most and Americans he is in the audience. Girl, I'm talking about he, my man. He, 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 he is in the audience. Sure. No, 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 boo. I'm talking about my man. We're getting married. I'm so glad that he's here. He's a Democrat. I'm a Republican. We get along just fine. He may want to see his tax return. And he wants to see his tax return. <laughs> Raise your hand if yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I just want to know if you're going to take his last name. Oh. Of course, of course, he's my husband. I'm so, he's going to be my husband in April. Right. And I'm so happy that you're here with me. And 40 days until the election, Miss Ann Coulter is back with a new book called Mugged, where she claims that President Obama has abandoned black Americans and that the O.J. Simpson verdict was a great thing for America. Please welcome the very controversial Miss Ann Coulter. Ann. Tell me what you're trying to say in this book. Because uh, we don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is um, race mongering has been very bad for America. Liberals use it to promote causes that have nothing to do with blacks and, in fact, harm blacks. And the, that excellent lead-in you just gave about um, O.J., I mean, I think that was the moment, having lived near New York City in the 70s and 80s, which was the golden era. It was like Trayvon Martin and Duke Lacrosse case every day. With the O.J. verdict, white America said, that's it, the white guilt bank is shut down. And that ended up being the best thing that ever happened what you to mean? black Americans. What are you talking about? I, I meant that mean. no longer... Was being acquitted was, was good for who? Yes, because you had millions of white people watching with the equivalent of what in New York we used to refer to as the Brooklyn juries, who simply would not convict even guilty black criminals, oh, um, not innocent black Hold criminals. up, Ms. Coulter, please yes. stop, please stop. If you're going to talk about race, at least, at least know what you're talking about. At least know what you're talking about. Well, tell me how much you know about being black. Well, this isn't and about black, being black. Well, but you just said, this is, you just made all these statements about how black people feel. Tell oh, me I how know. you know that. Yeah, you did. This is not a book about black people. Uh -huh. It is a book about white lip. Are either unemployed or not in school. And we want to work to change that. We see the violence that's happening in Chicago. What? It's unacceptable. Do they it's do what unacceptable you did? to see Albert the Russell. amount of murders that are happening. One second, Joy. Right. Because but what's happening in Chicago and there's not an uproar? that so many people are dying and being shot is unacceptable. Okay, well, and I'm so we are going to address that. And this president already was well, week tweeted about that. Yeah. Yeah. I want him government. to do anything there is to do to make sure that no family goes through what my family went through. My brother was murdered not even five years ago, mm -hmm. shot dead in his own home. When I see these families in Chicago, seven or 800 families had to go through what my family went through, I had to sit in the courtroom with the man that murdered my brother. This is more than just politics. For me, Joy, this is my passion. I'm right. I understand what you're saying. I'm questioning why do you think you were able to make it and all these other people well, could not? You know, that's a bigger question than for well, a three-minute segment, Does racism have anything Joy. to do with it, for um, instance? And, and there are a lot of historical things that has happened that, you, that other people could answer. I'm going to tell you about my life and my well, experience. Why do you think President Trump... I was Trump, able to make it. One second, Gretchen. I was able to make help. it because my mother 
made sure that we were in the church, that Christ was the head of our lives, that education was at the top of every mm -hmm. single thing that we did. I think and quite she common kept us the out black of community. trouble and out of the street. Yes. And that's why I made, I can't speak because we're not all a monolith. The African-American community is so diverse, but my mother and the sacrifice she made after my, my father was murdered is the reason that I am successful today. And I today. agree with all those things that you say and hats off for all Thank of your you. hard work and getting to where you are today. Uh -huh. I guess my question is, what is it about Donald Trump, President Trump, mm -hmm. that you see that will help change the way in which African Americans are in our communities? Well, I think that you all have gotten to know him as a business mogul, as a, uh, an reality entertainer, star. reality star, as a reality star, now as the president of the uh, United States. I can't Joy. Make it up. But I know him. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's got to burn your they blood. Say everybody I can mean, be president. He proved it. Go it's got to be really. Joy, I know it's got to be really, really hard after, uh, you know, the last year and a half of all the things that you said about Donald to see him sitting in the Oval Office. I know it's got to be hard for you, but I have to tell you that I know it him. It kills me as a matter of And I know it and does. I love that. But here is, here's the great thing. You all know him as the president. I know him as a friend. I know his heart. I know the things that he's seen has never been reported on and probably folks won't ever so talk about. So should listen to what he says? I'm talking about my experience, Joy. Yeah. Um, you can listen to what you want. You have decided to continue to hit him and hit him and hit him and not even give him a chance in his first I'm week. Waiting I'm waiting for him to apologize. I, I, I want to ask you, though. I just, you want who? I'm waiting apologize. for him to apologize for all the things he said about you. Uh, no, no, not please. to me. Not to me. I to veterans, to, to John McCain, no, to, the to the handicapped, the disabled. <laughs> that the message that he has about personally about school choice about opportunity about jobs I think that message did get to a lot of people and that's why a lot of African Americans a lot of people who were in poverty people of all genders and races came out my, my issue is that Americans did not come out for Donald Trump. they came out more than they had for Republicans they in the did. past and that they made did. something and you have to give some credit to that but Sonny. I, 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 think, but, you know, I think I think also have problem. to move from campaign now he's the president right, we're no longer here's campaigning here's so those same lines how do you bring those how do you bring the people in who who are saying you know what no matter what we're doomed to our refusing to listen to the fact that a lot of these programs in my opinion will bring opportunity how do you make those people who are, aren't inclined to when listen, we come back to listen. Um, we're going to uh, 